Hey everyone, Van here from the Free White North. Uh, we're here in Northern Ontario on Lake Superior to do some salmon fishing, hopefully. Uh, so a lot of times I get questions asked about what kind of gear I use, what I use to catch salmon in Northern Ontario or pretty much anywhere where salmon exist. Um, either whether it's the Pacific, the Atlantic Ocean, um, I think Lake Ontario has a bunch and uh, pretty much any of the Great Lakes has a really, really healthy sal uh, salmon population. Um, which most people don't know about. I actually didn't know until I started coming here about 10 years ago. The best way to catch salmon is obviously from a boat, and if that boat has a downrigger set up on it. Now, if you've never seen a downrigger, or don't know what it is, it's basically this little thing right here. This is an automatic electric downrigger, and there are manual versions of it available as well, which is basically a hand crank like this one without the assistance of an electric motor. So there's a, all it is is basically just a reel with steel cable on it that's attached by a boom and a pulley to a, uh, a little clip here. And on that clip, you actually attach what they call a downrigger ball or just a, a ball. So. This is a directional ball that I like. It's 15 pounds. It has a bit of a tail fin on it, which keeps it uh, moving through the water. It gives it a little bit of a motion as well, which uh, acts on the lure. The main reason why I like this ball is that it's heavy and there's way less blowback. So I'll talk about blowback a little bit later, but this is a ball that I prefer to use. So you attach this ball to the bottom and then you use one of these clips. Um, these are Scotty brand downrigger clips. Uh, you use these clips to actually control at what depth you want your lure to be at. So you clip this to the actual physical line down here, and then you clip this, the other uh, part of side of the clip, to your fishing line. So what that actually does is then as soon as you lower the downrigger ball all the way down while you're trolling, it'll take your lure down to that desired depth. So if on your fish finder you're seeing that uh, the fish are at around 40, 50 yards or 40, 50 feet, at depth and you're like 200 feet of water, you can lower this to about 38 or 39, a couple of feet above them because salmon notoriously strike from the bottom up. Uh, so if the lure is a couple of feet above them as you're going by them, you'll get, you'll get their interest and then they'll start to actually come after the lure and they'll chase it for a long, long time before they ever strike. So it's important to keep the lure um, above where the fish are at by a couple of feet. You don't want to be below them too often. Sometimes it can happen that they'll strike from anywhere. But uh, yeah, that's basically, that's basically the tactic that you want to use with a downrigger. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to help set all this up. We'll show you how it's all set up and then, um, and then we'll actually show you how to run two lines off one downrigger, which is a fairly common practice by a lot of anglers out here. So as far as downriggers are concerned, uh, you'll see here that I have the ball mounted onto the downrigger. It just attaches and just because, and I press a little up and down button to make it go down, and I press a button to make it go back up. That's how easy it is with an electric downrigger. You can just lower your line and retrieve it very, very quickly, especially if there's a change in the depth where it's gonna come all the way up. Let's say you're in 80 feet of water and now all of a sudden you're, tro you're trolling and your downrigger depth is set at 40. And all of a sudden you hit a ridge where it's like 40 or 35 feet of depth. You wanna get that downrigger as high as possible, as quickly as possible, just so you don't get it caught on rocks and it could possibly do some damage and rip your entire downrigger off of your boat. So it's really, really handy to have these. A lot of the newer downrigger is actually can tie into your GPS system on your fish finder and can automatically you can set to say you know troll at 40 feet off the bottom and it'll just adjust the downrigger automatically as they tie in so that's one nice feature that some of the newer downriggers have this one unfortunately doesn't have that but that's okay we, we pay pretty close attention to what we're doing and what depths we're fishing at um, and the next thing I want to talk about here are the downrigger clips themselves so this type of clip is a Scotty clip and it comes in three different flavors and I'll go over them really quickly sorry I'm getting eaten alive by bugs here um, this clip here, this particular one, can clip anywhere on the line. It's got a little safety mechanism here. It clips onto the downrigger line, and then you can use this as a brake to hold it in position at whatever depth you want. And then the second one can then be used to clip your fishing line into at whatever depth, and you can, these are actually um, tension sets, so the further into the clip you go, the more tension is required to rip it out of the line. So when a fish strikes, it'll actually take this out of this clip, and you'll know that you have a fish on the line. 
So we'll talk about that one a little bit later when we set it up. And the next one that I want to talk about is just this basic little uh, Scotty rig. Uh, this clips, same idea, same safety clip. Uh, you can just open it up like that. You can clip it onto the back of the downrigger ball. Most balls have a function back here and I'll show you real quick. Uh, you can clip it into back here and then you can clip your line onto the back of uh, the downrigger ball. That way your line will always be at whatever setting the downrigger is set at. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is with one of these. And these are actually my favorite because they don't require anything else but the friction set of this fairly heavy duty stainless steel device. So this clips into the line. If I just lower this a little bit, this clips into the line like so and holds it at whatever position you want. And then you can use this clip to control your fishing line. And it just removes very quickly. It's very easily adjustable up and down. And this one is another type of uh, downrigger clip made by Canon, so for Canon downriggers, which is another brand. It's actually a leading brand. And you can do the same thing. And um, it's pretty much the same thing, just a matter of uh, preference for which ones you'd like to use. I prefer the Scotty ones because these ones are the ones that are most readily available in most of the fishing stores. You can find them pretty much anywhere. And I like them just because they're super easy to use and I've had no trouble with them over the last six or seven years. Okay, so as far as tackle is concerned, what does salmon like to attack? What are they most attracted to? So this is the kind of tackle that I've had the most success, success with, and I'll show you what they are. I'll go through each one and explain why I think they work. A lot of times tackle is designed to sell the fisherman or the angler on the tackle, not necessarily to catch the fish. A lot of times that's kind of the going joke in the, uh, the fishing industry. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is a uh, Lucky Strike uh, Blue and Silver. You'll see a lot of these, it doesn't have to be Lucky Strike, it can be pretty much any brand. Uh, as long as it's got these dimples on them, because they reflect light a little bit better and uh, they're very, uh, they've got an interesting swimming motion in, in, the, uh, in the water. The thing that I will recommend the most with any downrigger setup is a spoon type lure as much as possible because they have the best action, fish are attracted to them, and uh, yeah, it, it, they work way better than any kind of uh, spinning wrap or any of those kinds of lures. This one here is a silver on the back, and the front side it's a dimpled, what they call a monkey puke pattern. I don't know why I could, they call it that. It's just uh, something that it's, it's well known by around these parts especially, and it's very, very hard to find outside of Thunder Bay. I haven't been able to find them even on the Pacific Ocean in the Vancouver Island area. Um, and there's a lot of salmon out there. Most guys will fish on some variant of these, but uh, the monkey puke we find a lot of success with, so that's, uh, that's a good one. Um, this one here is called a watermelon and it's got these kind of the chartreuse and magenta and silver in the middle with black spots throughout. This one we have a lot of success with. This is our kind of the second favorite that we like to use. And then this is actually a thinner version from uh, Stingray, the original monkey puke pattern. We have a lot of success with these as well. They're a little bit of a thinner spoon. They're not meant to be cast, they're meant to be trolled. So they have zero weight behind them almost. So you can't really throw them very far, but trolling behind a boat is very successful. So these ones I highly, highly recommend in both the, uh, the monkey puke and the, uh, the watermelon flavor. Now these ones are the Gibbs Gators. These ones we caught a ton of fish with, both salmon and lake trout. Uh, they are very, very successful what they do. Uh, it's, a, it's a dimpled pattern and it's got a bit of a curve to it. So it's got a really interesting wobble in the water that attracts a lot of fish with vibration and noise. So these ones are very successful and they're very, very good lures. The nice thing about them too is that there's way less line twist on them because they have these little rotation clips on them. So the, the yeah, they, uh, there's a lot less um, rotation and tangling in the water, which is nice, especially when you're using a downrigger and you're going about three miles an hour. So next we're gonna talk about how we're gonna set this all up and then we'll show you how it works. All right, so let's show you how we set up the downrigger. So we have our line, we have our lure already set up on the rod. I'm using the uh, venerable monkey puke that I was just talking about earlier. So I'm effectively just gonna put it in the water, let some line out. Let it get some, yeah, let it get out in the water. We're gonna probably let out about 20 feet in behind the boat. And we're gonna set it around 20. We 
like the action at this speed. We're going about we're going about three miles an hour, which is a little bit fast, but salmon strike anywhere from two and a half to three and a half miles an hour, so we're kind of right in the middle. So the first thing that I do is I set my downrigger into the water, my, the ball is in the water, I do that, and then I will take my clip, clip it to here, about probably at the depth of the boats, the gunnels, uh, which is usually about two or so feet, two and a half feet off the water line. So I know that I'm about two and a half feet above the, the ball, and I'll take this and clip it into the downrigger clip. And now it's like that. And then, I release, you can see that the downrigger clip is holding it in there, it forms a, a pretty tight bond. I will then release it and lower it into the water. So let's take it down, we're in about 60 feet of water right now. So let's take it down to about 30 and see what happens. I'll keep my finger on this right here, give it a little bit of, uh, a little bit of tension. So right now we're about 20 feet, we're gonna go down to 30. Uh, Okay, we're at 32, so that's fine. So as soon as that's done, with my finger on the reel holding it in position, I will put it into the downrigger holder, flip it into the lock position. Now it's locked in. The next thing, which is really, really important you wanna do, is tension the line. You wanna make sure that there's a really nice arc. And I'll explain that in a second. So as soon as I tension it, you can see there's a lot of tension on the line. What that will do is as soon as the fish strikes and gets hooked, you're gonna see the line snap up. That's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna let you know that there's a fish on the line, and two, which is the more important thing, it's gonna actually set the hook in the fish. So we've been trolling here for a little bit with our one set up at around 30, 32 feet. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to set up a single uh, rod, uh, sorry, a single, um, downrigger to use two rods on the same line, the same downrigger line. So we're going to bring this one up a little bit. So we're at uh, 32 feet. We're going to bring them about uh, probably 15 or so feet. We're going to say a 15 foot spread between the lures. So I'm going to bring it up. You'll see that the tension is coming up on this particular line. So we're at uh, 15 feet. I'm going to just tighten this up a little bit extra slack that we have. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, is actually I'm gonna bring in a couple more feet. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put, take our trusty second one of these uh, Scotty clips and uh, use our second line setup here. Now I'll mention that this particular one only has, uh, this downrigger only has one slot for one rod holder. What I've done is I've mounted a second rod holder in kind of close proximity. You can use any uh, rod holder. A lot of these will have dual or triple setups sometimes. It's just really up to you. And I think you can get an additional one from Big John, which is what this downrigger is, to actually hold two, uh, two rods for you. So what I'll do is I'll set this one up as well, same as I did with the first one. Flip it onto the line. Now we're ready to go. Just gonna get it to hold it here while I do my, put the second line in the water. this out about 30 or 40 feet. Make sure that it's a little bit farther back because it's up, up higher. Now I'm going to just basically do the exact same thing. Flip it. Release the tension on this guy. Put it in the rod holder. And I'm going to release both of these. Now it's a little bit difficult with one person, but it's doable. So let's take it down to depth. We're going to go down to about 40 feet. There we are. I'm going to take 
up any slack that you have. to go and that is how you fish with two downriggers i sorry two lures on one downrigger all right so one of the things that i want to talk about too that's really important when using a downrigger and you're fishing for salmon is the pattern of driving you don't want to just drive in a straight line you actually want to do an s a long s pattern what that'll do is that'll actually on the inside so depending on which side of the boat your uh, downrigger is mounted at on mine it's the, the left so the aft side um, you want to actually turn, start the S going one way and then moving in an opposite direction and just keep doing that throughout the kind of the area that you're fishing in. The reason for that is A, you'll cover more space, you'll cover a different, different variety of, uh, of uh, structures underneath and different depths, but the more important thing is that the lure will actually do different things on each side of the turn. So because mine's on the left side of the boat, I uh, when I make a right turn, the lure will go faster a left turn so and you keep doing that you're actually speeding the lure up and you're slowing it down in alternating cycles what that does it actually activates the especially the salmon but a lot of times any kind of salmonids which are any of the trout species to strike it activates their strike mechanism their strike instinct so it actually gets the, gets the fish on the hook a lot better so if you do an s pattern you're going to have more success as opposed to just driving a straight line back and forth up and down the lake one thing that I want to mention is that if you get a strike while fishing with a downrigger, you want to pull, you want to basically take it out of the rod holder and try to set the hook as much as possible if it hasn't already been set. But the other main thing that I want to mention is when you're battling the fish, you want either yourself or somebody to hit the up button on the downrigger to get that ball up out of the water or just to the surface level of the water uh, because you don't want the fish taking the line and tangling it up with the downrigger line. That's a very dangerous situation. You're, uh, you might lose your uh, your lure, you'll probably lose the fish, um, and you'll, it'll be a mess to clean up after the fact. So that's one thing that you want to keep in mind, is you have something to bring it up to the surface level of the water. You don't want to bring it up above the water line because if any kind of windy or wavy situation, that ball is going to swing on a pendulum and it's going to smash against the side of your boat and might do some damage. So you want to just keep that in mind, have it like well, one foot in the water, that way it's, it's out of the way, it's not going to get in the way of anybody with a net, it's not going to get in the way with the fish or are you trying to bring the fish to the boat. Uh, that's the only thing that I really want to mention around that. So when you're done fishing for the day or the afternoon or whenever you're done and you want to actually take this rig apart, how do you get everything back up to the boat? The really easy thing with this is that the downrigger is positioned as such, but the rod is right here. So you take the rod out of the water and you give it one big yank and that'll effectively release it from that little downrigger clip that was holding this. You're effectively simulating a fish strike when it would gets hooked onto the, the hook and then it releases from the clip. And then you just start reeling it back in. At the same time, I like to just hit the up button on the downrigger, kind of save some time. I'm reeling it in at the same time and just kind of watching on you know the countdown 28 feet, 26 as I'm reeling in. And as soon as I see it kind of get to about five or six feet, I'll take a peek, I'll stop, and you know, five, four, three, two, one, and my downrigger is at the water level right now, the ball. So I can bring it all the way up, you can see it right there, and we're good to go. So, so that's basically it, and then you reel in and you just do everything as you normally would to get ready to get back to port. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe below. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas and suggestions for topics that you'd like us to cover, please leave them below in the comment box. Make sure we answer those and we get back to you as soon as we can. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Free White North.